Hi everyone and welcome back for episode 2 in my animation series in UE4. In the last episode we got to this point where we have a character moving around but no animations associated to it. I'm currently using a Mixamo asset pack um, but obviously this will always work with your own meshes too. Um, so here is the animations I've downloaded. So what we're going to do today is figure out how to use these animations to make our character look more realistic as they walk about our world. So animation works quite differently than what some people think actually uh, in games. In games, when we actually animate, we're actually animating the skeleton. Uh, skin is then attached to that skeleton uh, to make it so we can see it because skeletons don't render. Now for animating Unreal, there are various things uh, available at, uh, for you. And we could, uh, if you're doing some basic animation, literally just call these animations from the blueprint of the character. However, what we are trying to do is try and make a bit more smarter uh, animation. So we can't just rely on that hard fixed playing animations when we want to play them. So things will change uh, throughout the game uh, quite intelligently. Now to be able to achieve that we have to use the animation blueprint. An animation blueprint is much like a normal blueprint where you can add logic and code to animations. This allows animations to be played at various um, sort of states and circumstances. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new animation blueprint. So right click or go add new animation and animation blueprint. In this window here uh, you've got parent classes up here if you want to make this a child of another animation blueprint. And at the bottom here you've got your target skeleton. We're not going to pick a parent class, but we do have to pick a skeleton. So here's my skeleton for my uh, my character. Okay, and I can now name it. Player. Anim. Oh, BP. And open it up. So. At first glance, it doesn't look too dissimilar from other blueprints we've been messing around with. Slight changes though. We do have uh, two types of graph. We have an anim graph, which is what by default will show up. And we have an event graph, which is more familiar to, uh, to you all if you've been doing blueprints. On the right hand side, you have the available animations associated to that skeleton. Okay, so here's all my ones from my Mixmo pack. Up the top we've got the details panel and on the left hand we've got a preview window and then you've got the usual my blueprint options down the bottom. So the way this works is we first of all are going to get a reference to the player character's uh, actual blueprint and store it as a reference. So to do that we're going to right click and, and type in try uh, get pawn owner. Now we'll attempt to get the owner uh, of the pawn. So this will get the uh, get the pawn that is associated to this anim uh, animation. Sorry. So from there we're going to cast this to the player character and hook up to that update animation. And the update animation event triggers pretty much all the time. So we're cast into the player character, meaning that we now can save the as player character as a reference. Uh, not reference, so promote to variable, sorry. Now, this can get a bit messy, but what we can do, because we're casting, what we can do instead is disconnect it from here and instead put in a begin play. Now the reason why we've done this is because this is updated all the time and it's quite expensive to keep casting to the player character. So if we do it once at start, we can then set the reference to the player character. So we go my player there. And then on the event update animation, we just want to check whether or not my player is still valid. So drag out the get for my player, right click and convert to validated get. 
Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is access some variables for our player animation. So my player, we're going to get the speed that the player is walking in. So this is how we detect whether or not the player is moving. Now speed isn't a variable that we can just type in and get. Instead what we have to do is get a velocity. And velocity, if you don't know your science, is basically a, a direction and a speed at the same time. So this will get you a vector and from here we can get the length get uh, sorry not get we want to type in vector length instead just vector length on its own and that will get you the speed that they're traveling at okay with that we're going to promote that to a variable and hook up to is valid and I'm going to name it speed so now we've got access to the speed variable so that means we can determine when the player is actually uh, should be moving so before we get cracking over here let's go back over to our animation graph so animation graphs work very differently from blueprint graphs here you can see a result as attached to the final animation pose the final animation pose is the final pose that the character will be in and the result is whatever we plug into here so for example we can drag in the idle animation and connect it to there meaning that the final animation pose for the character will be idle click compile and you can see it over here in this window let me just hide the uh, bones so you can't see the bones uh, where is it do there we go Done. okay but this isn't that smart this is just playing a animation okay we want to be able to switch animations throughout now one tool at our disposal that we can use is a state machine so if we drag out from the result we can type in state and go add new state machine and a state machine when you double click on it takes you to a new blueprint graph and basically you're going through layers so we can go up or from here we go down into a state machine and then from that state machine we can go up to the animation graph so into the state machine we go and a state machine uh, is a way we determine what state the character model actually is in so if I drag out from entry here and click on add state I can go idle and we have an idle state I can double click on here and you get another final animation pose so let me just drag in the idle animation again if I hook that up now and click compile we've now got the play idle going into the idle state From here, we can drag this out and add another state, and we can call it moving or walking. Rather, we can do walking again. We can open this up and attach an animation to this, but for now, we're going to leave it blank because we're going to add something special to this. Now, for idle to go into walking, we have this. This is the rule that uh, determines whether or not idle can go into walking. So if we double click on this, this is going to be true to enter the walking thing. So we've got speed here, so let's drag speed out, which is get. And we want to check whether or not speed is equal to, not equal to, zero. So we're going speed is equal to zero, and then not will negate that back to whatever it is so basically we're saying if speed is not equal to zero if it's not equal to zero then it will go into the walking animation but that's only one way we want to be able to go back as well so what we're going to do is drag back from here to idle and open up this transition rule here and we get speed get and do equal to zero this time not using a not because if it is equal to zero we're going to go back to idle now we can test this out um, so if I put in actually let's go into walking and add a simple walking animation uh, we're going to change it later so for now just drag in this here so now we've got a completed state machine I'm going to close this go back to our player character click on the mesh in the component list and in the mesh you have an option to choose the anim class 
From that drop down, you can choose your blueprint. Click compile. And now if I play, you can see it in the idle animation, but as soon as I move, it will go into the walking animation. Which is all well and good. But it's not perfect, because if I strafe left and right, it's still moving, it still takes speed, but as you can see, it's still playing the walking forward animation, so it looks a bit goofy. So, there is a way around this, and that's by using a blend space. To make a blend space, go to Add New, Animation, and you've got Blend Space. There are two types. We want the one that says no, uh, just blend space, not 1D, just blend space. Or when you make a new blend space, you have to pick a skeleton. We're going to use my skeleton there. Uh, movement. Blend and open up the blend space. So here you've got some confusing looking mess. Okay, so a blend space allows us to blend between different animations based on different criteria. This is what we call a 2D blend space because we have two types of cr uh, criteria we can associate to it. So the way it works is we drag animations onto this graph and assign this graph values. So let's first of all set some values here. So the bottom, the x axis, uh, the horizontal axis, I'm going to name direction. And the vertical axis, I'm going to name speed. So this is the speed the player is going to travel, and this is the direction the player is traveling at. So this is how we determine if they're going left or right. So we need to change some of these values here. So speed, uh, sorry, direction, sorry, uh, runs between 100, uh, minus 180 and positive 180 so 0 is straight ahead uh, minus 90 is left 90 is right and minus 180 is backwards or 180 is also backwards um, speed we're going to change from 0 to 450 and you can see now on the graph this is all now represented as we want it to be so from here we can now drag some animations onto it so in my animation list on the bottom right, I'm going to drag walk forward at the top of my blend space here. And then I'm going to find uh, walk left and right. And put walk left at minus 90. And walk right at 90. And walk backwards twice. One on that side and one on that side. I can click and drag this little green dot with the uh, yeah, to click and drag to change the preview. So here I can walk in backwards, and you can see it blend between walking backwards, walking left, forwards. And you get a nice smooth transition. Now what else I'm going to do is I'm going to add idle to this as well, and drag idle down the bottom here. So now I can get a smooth transition from idle. To moving you see so idle slowly moving and now you're off this works really well when using a thumbstick or analog controls because then you can you can creep basically around so you've got creeping walking and if we wanted to we can add running to this as well can you keep it all on one sheet if you like I'll click save and I'm going to close this now now Go back into your player and in blueprint. Now, into our state machine, we've got the walking uh, animation. We want to remove that now and dragging the blend space that we've just done. So it's in here. So there you go, movement blend. Drag that out. And here's your blend. And here are those two axes the x axis and the y axis. I'm going to plug that into the result. And my x-axis direction my and my y-axis is speed. Well, we've got speed, so let's drag speed onto there. Now, direction is a bit more trickier. To do that, we have to go back to our event graph and set up our direction variable. To do that, I'm going to drag from the end of set speed and type in direction. And you'll see calculate direction as one of the functions. So this needs a few things. First of all, a target for the anim instance, which is itself, this. Velocity, and then base rotation. Now the velocity we've got already here. We can drag that out 
one, two there. And for base rotation, we're going to get my player, get actor rotation, no, not so, not that, sorry, base rotation, you just go down here, make rotator. And I think that's what we do there, Let's click compile. And once we've got return value, we're going to promote that to a variable and call it direction. Uh, compile again, go back to our state machine, and now we can drag direction onto our blend space there. We're going to click play, walk forwards, walk left, walk right, walk backwards, and everything in between. So you can see if I move forwards and left, you can see it's a mixture of walking forwards and walking right. And we can change certain things. We've got things we can put in between that as well. So in my one, I actually have a walk left and uh, walk forward left and walk forward right one as well. So I can merge these onto here too. But for that, I need to increase my grid slices here. So on my x axis, my horizontal axis, number of grid divisions, I'm going to change that to eight. So now I've got in betweens. So I'm going to put walk forward left there and walk forward right there. And I get some animations. So one thing you'll notice if you use Mixamo is that some of the animations may move off their spot like so. We need to change that. Okay, I previously changed it for these other ones, but let's go back and change it for these ones now. So in my animations, this may you may not have to do this if it's your own mesh. It's only if you use Mixamo usually. So as you can see, the model will actually animate off of its mark. That is basically a way of animating, and you can do that. Uh, however, what we need it to do is stay on the spot. Uh, we don't want to use root motion uh, because a this is a player-controlled character. So what we're going to do is we're going to change it so it's locked onto a spot. Now to do that, we go into the left-hand side here. You'll see root motion section. And here you'll see force root lock. Click that button, and it will lock it to the root. And root motion, root lock, you want to change from reference pose to anim first frame. Click save. And now I'm going to do that for the other one. So again, force root lock and anim first frame. Save. Now if I go back into my uh, blend space. You can see the animation now doesn't go wandering off okay and if I play this in game I now have more natural walking forward and walking right motions so already our character is looking a lot more realistic in the movement in the next episode we're going to be handling the aiming making the character aim and twist around the screen aiming at whatever the player is aiming at. If you've liked this episode and you want to support me further, please subscribe and uh, click the notify button. And if you want to support me, you can go on to Patreon and donate an extra dollar right now to see the next episode in this video, plus many other videos and other benefits like my Discord channel and everything else. These fantastic people already have helped me out massively, and a big thank you to all of them. Uh, can't, can't thank them enough. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.